Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Star Trek Prodigy Season 1 Episode 9 A Moral Star Part 1. This video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek Prodigy so I have to start with a spoiler warning of course for Prodigy up to Season 1 Episode 9. If you haven't seen up to this point you will not want to watch this video otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So, um, yeah, this episode was pretty good. Now, in general, I don't really like the diviner or, you know, the evil bad guy because it's a very stereotypical evil bad guy. Dare I say a cartoon villain, but uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, this is a cartoon, so <laughs> there's only so much I can sort of hold that against it. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just not very interested in, in uh, this villain. I really, I hope they kind of write him off the show at the end of season one, honestly, because his story does seem finite, and it does seem like if they try to keep him in the show, it's just going to seem tacked on and dragging on. They will come up with more excuses to keep this character in the show. But regardless of all that, I like this episode. Um... I actually didn't mind his inclusion, the fact that it was about him, because they made the episode more about the characters, more about an obstacle to overcome, and how um, they band together as a crew uh, to overcome. Now, I said in the, in the previous episode that I feel like this show has totally earned... Um, this these characters bonding and you feel that connection you feel that bond is so when doll says in this episode that he cares about them and he wants to do what's best for them i believe it and i think the show has earned uh that state unlike some other shows <laughs> star trek discovery <clears throat> which hasn't necessarily earned the connections that they constantly try to cheer now um so, yeah, so this episode starts out with a difficult situation, a moral quandary, where the, uh, and I was actually, to, I'll start off, because when they showed at the end of last week's episode, which I loved last week's episode, but when they showed that robot thing with the red eye, go, duh, 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 I thought, oh my god, we're gonna get some stupid plot about it coming alive again and terrorizing the crew and i'm really glad i'm thankful they didn't go that way uh i was worried that the worst i wasn't actually looking forward to this episode because i thought it would be a stupid episode about the you know the terrorizing evil robot but instead it was actually just a message uh left by the diviner where he presents this moral quandary which i find uh, really fascinating and of course it's totally within his character being the mustache twirly cartoon villain that he is uh <laughs> basically i mean maybe i'm not being fair to him they do give him some death there is there is a bit of mystery surrounding him too but uh because it, apparently he's the last survivor him and um gwen are the last survivors of the race but anyway he says that um he's going to kill all of the slaves uh, at at the mining unless they come back and uh, give him the proto star and I think um, the the idea is is that they um, if they do give him the proto star they'll let them all go and so if you know if they wanted to do the right thing they would help free the slaves rather than simply let them die now, the option that they throw out there, I think Jenkin Pod throws this option out there, that they could go to the Federation and, and see if the Federation could help, but they said that the Federation might not get there in time, which, unless they all have this protostar technology, or they have more ships with this kind of technology, uh, no, they wouldn't get there at all, because it's in the freaking Delta Quadrant. <laughs> but I guess they're assuming that there's more ships with this Protostar technology. It's funny, I can't remember exactly when they said it takes place after Voyager. It's, it's shortly after Voyager, it's not that long. And it's funny to imagine that Starfleet can just hop to the Delta Quadrant so easily now. I mean, uh... <laughs> 
if that's true, then in the end game uh, episode of Voyager, when it took him an extra 16 years to get home, that wouldn't actually be true because Starfleet would have developed this protostar technology by then and just came and got them. But anyway, and it kind of renders Voyager kind of useless. They spent all this time trying to get home, and now they can just hop there <laughs> with a snap of the finger. It kind of deflates everything. But anyway, I'm getting uh, sort of caught up, stuck on that little detail. But <laughs> regardless, um, so anyway, so <laughs> so they don't think so they're stuck with these options if they go to the federation they they could uh their time could expire and everyone would die or if they go to uh just to make the deal first of all they'll lose the protostar second of all um dr evil will probably betray them <laughs> which as we see in the episode that of course he would uh, and uh, so um and i love this how dolls sort of face everyone's like come on captain you make the decision and jake and bomb sort of rallies everyone was like yeah let's go get them uh what do you say and doll just walks out and I actually think this is uh, shows character growth for Dahl, that, that he uh, actually isn't sort of just like, yeah, let's do it, that he's actually giving it thought and, say, and saying, like, look, we're putting everyone's lives at risk because most likely we're going to, um, he's going to betray us. Like, he's smart enough to see that. And so, um, and he's smart enough to see that one of his half-baked plans isn't going to cut it. So he asks Gwen, and I think it's implied everyone else, although Gwen's the smart, although Zero is probably really smart too, uh, <laughs> that that they're going to help like concoct the plan together. And so I've talked about this before in some other reviews that I did. Like when there's, I don't know if you'd call this a heist, but whenever there's a, it, they do the typical heist format here wherever there's a heist or a plan that's about to be hatched to to do something there's rules with fiction so if you see them hatching the plan like if you see the characters talk about the plan and spell out the plan to the audience then that means that plan is going to fail <laughs> and so and they're gonna have to improvise or something goes wrong if you don't see them hatch out the plan they kind of glaze over it then that means the plan is going to go off without a hitch. <laughs> and that's that's the rule of um, a fiction. I think Ocean's Eleven did a thing where they intercut them planning, talking about the plan, and the plan actually does go without a hitch, but they do that because they intercut it with actually seeing the plan executed first. If you see them flat out just describe the plan before they execute it, then that means it's going to fail because otherwise it's not very interesting because you're just seeing on screen what they already explained to you. So usually they skip over the explaining part if it goes without a hitch. That way the audience can see it unfold for the first time when it actually happens, which is what they did here. So I knew um, when they had it all these montages of them they talk about Murph being indestructible and they, they're like testing all these things and, and doing all this stuff as a team so that right there informed me one that they had a plan uh, I mean they even talked about they have a plan and two the plan was going to work because we don't they don't tell the audience what that plan is so <laughs> um, so when we get there this takes up most of the episode, really. And when they get there, uh, they act like, you know, the Viner, um, like, makes the trade, and they act like this is the trade, and he gets on the ship, and he turns Janeway evil. <laughs> and and then he's like, I never said I would give them their lives. I mean, that's implied asshole. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, again, it's Dr. Evil. Of course he's going to betray them. So he, like, destroys the, the core or whatever, and it has all the characters floating, going, oh, no, we're going to die. We're screwed. And they're trying to make the audience think that they're screwed, which, of course they're not. Not. I mean, I guess kids, because it shows for kids, maybe kids wouldn't catch on to this. <laughs> but even 
I don't know, even kids, I think, would catch on to the fact that they just said they're going to have a plan, and we saw this montage of them getting ready for this plan, so obviously they're going to they have a plan to deal with this. So I'm just like, come on, all right, let's get on with this. Let's move past this, trying to make us think they're going to, they're screwed and they're all going to die because we know that's not the case because we've seen it that they have a plan. So, and then finally they reveal that uh, they stole the, the proto star and like Murph's like eating it, which I love, I love Murph. Anyway, and they actually like made a fake zero. So what what they saw before that was zero wasn't actually zero. It was Murph, and so zero was actually hiding somewhere else, which was also cool. Uh, and um and so they so um what's his face? Diviner didn't actually have the the proto star that he wanted because he wanted the proto star drive and they kept it there and so that was their plan now i think there might be more to their plan which you might see in part two but the episode it cuts there so a few things a few details i want to jump into um well first of all i'll say i did like that I just think they took, I didn't appreciate the fake out, oh no, they're all screwed, because clearly they're not. Uh, but I did like seeing their plan executed, it was cool. Okay, so a few details. First of all, the Diviner, obviously, as I said, there's some mystery with him, because he obviously has something in for Starfleet. Um, because when Gwyn was wearing the, you know, the Starfleet badge, he's, like, really pissed off and, like, take that off, and, like, smashes it. So, obviously, there, he has some history with Starfleet. He has a grudge against them. Um, and then we also see that he has a plan, and but he won't really tell Gwyn what it is, and he, he was starting to, but then he got a sense that she was hiding something, and, and he was freaking out. And so they're just delaying the audience knowing what his plan is. Um, and, um, yeah. And so, and the other thing is he turning Janeway evil. <laughs> No, it reminded me a lot of the episode Equinox Part 2 where the the, uh, the um, Captain Ransom just like deleted the Doctor's moral subroutines and all of a sudden he was evil, which actually is not how that works. Talked about that before. If you do delete his morality, he would still have uh, loyalty to his friends in 709. He wouldn't start torturing 709. He would just kill Captain Ransom. Uh... But this, to be fair, this isn't as bad because it's not, the Janeway hologram's not the same thing as the Doctor hologram. And they didn't say we're removing the moral because they're just saying he's like loaded up a different version of the Janeway hologram who was like more loyal to him, which, I mean, we don't know. Apparently they have some sort of history with the ship, so maybe he had already pre-programmed it. So there could be a perfectly good explanation. I just not really I'm just kind of opposed to the concept of an evil holo Janeway hologram, but whatever. It's it's um there could it certainly there's more explanations for it to not be nearly as bad as the Equinox thing, which was terrible. Uh, <laughs> so I I'm willing to let that go uh, um a bit. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, and it does feel like just half an episode, really. Um, I, I almost considered waiting till next week to review. It did seem to, like, cut it, like, abruptly. So it's really, I think it's, like, just one episode. <laughs> uh, kind of like the premiere was. But that's fine. Um, I think it was, it was a good cliffhanger. I think it was a... It was a good, uh, a good setup that showed the strength of these characters and the bronze, and I, that's what was the strength of this episode. And as much as I hate the diviner, and hell, he's a stereotypical evil cliche, there's some mystery around him. He is, he does, he definitely has a desire to keep his daughter around, but he is really being shitty to her and not respecting her wishes. And so he's a shitty father. And, of course, you know, he enslaves people and he was just going to kill them all. So, obviously, he's evil, evil, evil. So there's really no redemption for him. If they try a redemption arc for him, it's going to piss me the hell off. Because you can't... When I say someone who was keeping his slaves for so long and then just casually, you know, it's like, oh, let's just kill them all because they don't serve me anymore. 
There's no redemption for a character like that. None. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see uh, where I'm still... Dude, they haven't even touched on the Chakotay um, uh, mystery, which might be related to this one, to be fair. Um, so it will be interesting to see where uh, we'll look over here. So... I have an I have a feeling I'm not gonna get any answers to these mysteries for it until the second half of season one, which won't be until like this summer. But whatever. <laughs> I mean, that is the frustrating thing about this show. But overall, I'm actually enjoying Prodigy a lot. I'm I dare say it might be my favorite, my second favorite of the new track behind um, Lower Decks. But we'll see. We're only like nine episodes in, but it's definitely way more impressive than that first nine episodes and the other shows, which Discover and Picard, to be fair, I mean, to be fair to them or to, to give them some credit, uh, mixed results. I'll say with those shows where the show is a bit more consistent now they did there were some crappy episodes in this show too it's not perfect but it reminds me more of a a typical star trek show that d space nine next generation voyager all of them had crappy episodes too but overall were good were discovery and Ricard are just too mixed for me like they can't get their shit together especially discovery's had four seasons although i will say <coughs> the second half of season four is looking very promising uh that was an amazing mid-season finale that they had so maybe they'll turn things around in the fourth season but in the first season of Prodigy I'm I'm, th I'm really impressed with the show so far even though it's not all it has some issues for sure anyway my rating for um god what's this episode called again a moral star part one out of ten is an eight uh extremely good uh, so we'll see uh, we'll see where we go from here. Maybe I'll have to take this rating down uh, <laughs> After the second part of it sucks, but hopefully it won't hopefully it will Hold up to this and this will be a really decent way to end the uh, the first half of the season Mid sea I still hate this season structure apparently this is common for Nickelodeon, but Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for my review of um, Star Trek Prodigy uh, episode, Season 1, Episode 9. I shall be back, of course, next week to cover the second part. And, um, yeah, and you can also check out my channel as I cover all things Star Trek on my channel. Uh, very soon we'll be just covering um, Star Trek, the original series, as well as other shows such as uh, The Expanse, Star Wars, Clone Wars, and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. Thanks a lot for watching.